Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu, and I am your co-host, TMD. And we, hey, we got a question from uh, Claudia Horning. Uh, she wants to know, do you think Jay and Jimmy will ever fight again as brothers? Will they ever tag up again, you think? Yeah, there's always a possibility. I mean, you know, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of the fans uh, missed them too, uh, seeing them two in the ring together as one. Um, but it's also kind of refreshing to be able to see them, you know, uh, venturing out on singles competition as well. As a wrestler, you, you, you have to, you have to be able to, uh, to go down that path, you know, such as, uh, you know, I always, uh, 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 say, you know, to like how the Heart Foundation did. You know, everybody knows, uh, you know, Owen and, and Brett are brothers and so forth, but, you know, they they too, they kind of, you know, parted ways to fill out their single careers. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, brothers or family members, you would always want to venture into. And I'm glad that, you know, my boys are doing that now. And, and yeah, I, I think... Uh, once that's you know that's over and they're satisfied of their single you know uh, single competition run there's only one thing else to do is to come back uh, to be able to give the fans that treat of seeing the one of the greatest tag teams in the business to reunite so yes, hopefully yes, you know, hopefully that that'll come back but you know uh, during the meantime you know uh I say that, you know, they're just enjoying their times as a single competition. Jimmy's taking some time off for a bit. You know, Jay is just uh, on that yeet mania all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, he's one of the hottest entrants, you know, that uh, we've seen in a long time. Uh, and to be able to witness that, you know, with my own eyes, I'm a proud daddy. Speaking of being a, speaking of being a proud daddy, uh, Audio Tac Zero One wants to uh, know. Uh, this is his question. Uh, Jay recently did a promo for Money in the Bank, and it looks like he's the favorite to win. As a father, how has the journey been seeing your boy push like the stars you've known they are? Ah, oh, very proud. Yeah, I mean, good, good question. There. It's very, very, very proud to see them. You know. Uh, uh, get their flowers, and and when I say get their flowers, it wasn't like given to them. You know, let's go back to when these, you know, these boys were 17 years, <coughs> excuse me, possibly 18 years now, 18, yeah. And, uh, you know, they're still young at, at you know, at, at heart, you know, but, you know, after so many years, me personally as a father now, I, I can see, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the movements of their bodies, you know, as if, you know, when we're together, you know, they don't move as quick anymore. And I, and that's not because they're getting older. It's because, uh, you know, their bodies are banged up from so many, you know, years on the road and so many bumps and, and so forth. So it catches up with you. But, you know, it's, it's I'm very, very, you know, proud. I, I don't know if there's an even bigger word than that, you know, to, you know, to be able to see the boys do their things and, and finally get the, you know, the recognition that they so rightfully deserve and work hard for. So yes, you know, they're, just, they're doing what they're doing. You know what I mean? To get out there, it, it shows in their work. They love what they do. They're very passionate. You know, they love their fans, you know, good or bad, those that boo them, whatever. At the end of the day, you know, you know, they're the ones. Um, here's a question coming in from Jeremy Court. And it almost sounds like it's trivia, but hey, um, I'm game and I know you're game. So here we go. Jeremy Court is asking, uh, Big Keish, who is the oldest current WWE TNA superstar still wrestling? Hmm. TNA superstar? WWE slash TNA superstar. I think what they're saying is somebody who spent time in WWE and TNA, uh, who, who, who did both and they're still wrestling today. I, I know somebody right off the top of my head. L.A. Knight? L.A. Uh, that's a 
That is of the wow, Keish, good one. Um, I'm gonna go with Billy Gunn. Yeah. Yep, Billy Gunn's in AEW holding it down and doing a hell of a uh, – he's got a hell of a uh, run over there at AEW. So I'm going to go with Billy Gunn, and you said L.A. Knight. That's, that's good. And, and listen, you know, they, they're they both, like, in tremendous shape. Jeez, Louise. Mm -hmm. And still at it. But, yeah, man, that was, that was, that was a good one with uh, Billy Gunn, you know. How could I have forgot that? He's one of my good friends out there, and – uh, to be able to see him out there still doing it, you know, is just amazing. You know, I just goes to show you take care of your body very well, aging but a number. Yes, sir. Um, and now here's something interesting. Uh, William Salyers, um, he is saying Umaga Hall of Fame 2025. Yeah. You know, I've been pushing for my brother to – I, I've seen mm -hmm. get into the Hall of Fame on you know my Twitter handle and you know my social media and so forth. You know, is this? You know, I, I feel like Yankee deserves a spot uh, into the WWE Hall of Fame. You know, uh, uh, his work speaks for itself. Uh, the person speaks for itself. Uh, if you know, then you know. Uh, a lot of the boys, a lot of the divas, you know, uh, love Yankee. And, uh, you know, the fans, you know, the, the fans are, you're the one that truly can make this happen is to, uh, you know, to go in there and voice your, your opinion and so forth. If you see me post up about my brother and it, it ain't but a simple repost, you don't even have to, you know, repost with a quote, but, uh, you know, the, and, and they see it, you know, at the end of the day, I just feel like he's, uh, it, it's time, you know, uh, He's been gone since '09, and uh, you know, Eki, he, he's put in a lot of work, just in the wrestling industry in general. So, you know, I'm always going to keep on pushing for my brother. You know, I feel like that. Uh, you know, my uh, my younger brothers, uh, the Tonga kid as well. You know, should be uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. I feel like Samu. You know, the head trickers. You know, he should be inducted. I mean. Uh, pretty much, uh, you know, all of us, when we say 75 plus years, past, yes. past in the future, it, dude, I mean, whether you like us or not, we put in work. Yes, sir. We put in work, you know, in not only in WWE, but just in the wrestling business alone. And, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, this is just me with my humble opinion. I'm not forcing this down anybody's throat. But I'm just, you know, speaking facts of yes, what sir. it is. At the end of the day, you know, it's a recognition. But a lot of us walk away with a memory that can be embedded in everybody's uh, mind. But we walk away with aches and pains. You know, our life goes on in the second part of our lives to be able to catch up with our families and our grandkids. And, you know, to be able to, you know, kind of be active as best as we can without you know without uh without dealing with the aches and pains you know and i never like to show that when i'm around my family or so forth when i'm just might be a sciatica nerve there might be a vertebrae that's just you know for years is you know but i don't want my problems to be their problems you know this is what i signed up for this is what we signed up for and this is the outcome uh, when you're at that part in your career, you know, be it at the beginning or <clears throat> towards the end. So, yeah, let's uh, let's hope that, you know, they're able to, you know, to get in some of the family members. Uh, definitely Umaga, definitely sure. the Tonka kid, you know, man, so, he was Roddy Piper. And, mm -hmm. of, and you got Samu, you know, we were the first uh, to win the tag team belts as far as together. You know, when we first teamed up in, into the WWF back in the day. So, you know, let's hope, let's hopefully that goes through. Yeah. So, speaking of TK being in the Hall of Fame, uh, Tonga Kid, now do you see him going in single or do you see him going in uh, with uh, Haku as the Islanders with Bobby Heenan? Well, I, I would kind of see him going in with the Islanders with Bobby Heenan. Uh, I mean, definitely Tonga Kid was, uh, 
he had a hell of a singles career, you know, himself, but not too long. Uh, he was more so with Jimmy Snuka, but the real, when he really took off, when, I would have to say when he was a part of the Islanders with, you know, Uncle Haku and uh, the late, great uh, Bobby Heenan, the best to do it, man. The best. Um, so, oh, my God. I, I kind of see that, you know. I, I don't even think, you know, there's a guy too, how cool. Like, why is he not, you know, into the Hall of Fame yet? You know, he should be as well, uh, be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So there's just so many of uh, uh, of us in the bloodline that's tied in together, you know, that, you know, definitely, you know, deserve a right, you know, to be able to take the seat into the elite club of uh, uh, being a WWE Hall of Man. Uh, Speaking of uh, Haku uh, Kishi, I want to talk about his sons, uh, yeah. Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. Uh, they are now called the Gorillas of Destiny. I, I wanted to hear your take on the Gorillas of Destiny so far in the WWE. Well, they're already, I mean, they're, first of all, welcome home. Uh, it's been a long time, you know, waiting for these boys to, to come back from Japan. They dominated Japan uh, for years. And I believe it's their younger brother, the tall uh, seven-foot kid. Uh, that's that, that was He's probably still out there. Um, but I think, uh, you know, they're, they're a good fit into the bloodline. You know, they are bloodline. And the way you know, I look at it, you know, we... Um, uh, Definitely, I, I feel that, you know, they, those two are going to have a, you know, when they decide to kind of handle the, the tag team part of the bloodline business or whatever the angle that that they're, you know, amongst, uh, I think they'll be great. It's a good hand for, you know, for tag teaming, you know, and I, I'll just throw this out there. I, again, you know, I try to figure out who who can be the good guys, the right people to run with Jimmy and Jay when they do tag up together? And there it is. There it is. Right there. Mm -hmm. Bloodline is the timeline. Yes, sir. It, mm -hmm. it's just, it just makes so much sense. It makes so much money. And it makes so much, you know, uh, uh, a perfect angle an easy angle to, to put together. And so, you know, I think that, you know, the boys can, it'll be a personal, like a good dream match amongst those four. Yes, sir. You know I mean, because you know, we hang out, you know each other, mm -hmm. but then to get, and to get it, let's get it cracking and get it popping. Mm -hmm. Let's do this match, man. You can imagine all four of them. They're just going to take that to the next level, you know? Yes, sir. And, the last time I've ever seen <laughs> of the Usos uh, have a match in a tag team match that I felt was just uh, just unstoppable, like any time they got together, was against the New Day. Wow. Their chemistry with New Day was just like poetry in motion. You know what I mean? They've known each other so long and come up on the ranks so long that you know they got all their work together fine-tuned like it's almost like they can do it do that match amongst those guys in their sleep and once you can get like that working with anybody else like it's just a you know it's a no-brainer not only you're having a good match and you're delivering uh a five-star match for the fans that paid harder and money. But in a way, you know, and I know Joey as being a wrestler is like, is what we call a night off. Yes, sir. I mean, you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about um, this guy here being clumsy or this guy, all oh, this forget spots. And, you know, I mean, he can't throw a drop kick. And when he does, he kicks me in the mouth. And yeah. They'll work against somebody that you don't have to, there's no, worrying about anything because these guys are just straight professionals and we just mesh together. You want to be married to that guy anytime you go on the road because you know you're going to have a great match. There's going to be a great attitude 
and and nobody's gonna, you know, you're not gonna have to worry about thirty seconds, you know, the person ending your career. So, yes, sir. So I look forward for the gorillas, uh, the the Tonga kids and uh, the brothers uh, uh, versus yes, uh, sometime down the line. So let's talk about uh, the Paramount Chief. Let's talk about your son, Sola Sakoa. How would you grade his performance thus far? Because he's been holding it down. He is the man. He is the man of the bloodline right now. Um, you know, and uh, we can all see it. There's uh, something building up. Uh, who's going to be the next tribal chief? Is he going to be the tribal chief? Roman Reigns, he come back. Is he going to be the tribal chief? Uh, it, it's, I mean, I really think Solo's really coming into his own right now. Uh, what, what do you think? No, I think, uh, I think, you know, I think what the whole world thinks. Uh, Solo's really, you know, finding his way. Uh, it's, it's nothing hard for him. Like, he's already, he's bred for this, you know. All he was waiting for was an opportunity. And once that opportunity came, I, I like to call him Shook Knight because, you know, he yep. liked it that he switched up his swag a little bit. Yes, you yep. Know, I've seen the new photos that, that, you know, that's out there with him uh, with the black and the red and, and so I texted him the other day and said, man, I like the suit, how it looks, but I, man, that, that, that red coat pops, you know, <laughs> yep, yep. but on the side, you know, yes, I don't sir. tell him, don't tell him what to do or anything because I like for him to, you know, he finds his way and, and I want him to be able to create things that, that he sees himself because he's the one in the ring. You know, I love that he kind of brought back the black gloves and, you know, something that, you know, back in the day when Kishi turned into the Batman, mm -hmm. you know, straight leather coat, red leather, and the whole Rikishi wear with the black gloves and and all that stuff, the big thick chain. So, you know, I think he's doing a great job. I think, uh, you know, he's, he's getting that, 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 uh, uh, that experience of when it's time to turn it on, it's time to turn it on and without even thinking about it. You know, he's his uh he looks relaxed in the ring. He looks uh he looks very uh primed out there. You know, like there's nothing that he's nervous about. Like you see it in his eyes, I see it in his movement. Yes, his sir. Timing, his promos, his you know, his his you know, his look, uh, you know, he's got his hair all nice and trimmed and the bleach blonde hair. So I uh, we, we we're looking at a superstar. You know, when I well, you know, I'm not sure a lot of people know this. Uh I just it a little side note here. So um you you know I do acting, you know I've done a few little uh things here and there. Um I went out for a, a movie, a Nicole Kidman movie called uh, The Destroyer. And um, I made it all the way to the very last round. And then I didn't get the role. You know who got the role? Your son, Solo Sokoa, got the role. for uh, The role was for a Samoan guns dealer in this movie. And uh, that dialogue was not easy. It was like 20 pages of dialogue. Um, so yep. kudos, kudos to Solo being uh, uh, dimensional. Like, he can do it all. He he could do the wrestling. He could do the acting. Now, did you see his performance in the Nicole Kidman movie? Well, yeah, I was up against him. <laughs> <laughs> he, he beat you out too. He beat me out too. So <laughs> this was uh, what? This, what? This, was, this was his first gig into Hollywood. Yes. Yes, sir. I, I uh, remember. During the time, uh, you know, uh, uh, we had to do like an audition, right? So he had no idea what yeah. the hell. Was. So I said, Here's a, they sent me the script. And of course, it was like 20 pages. And so I read it and then I gave it to him. We printed and he. So this kid, he probably practiced, I don't know, maybe 24 hours. He looked on YouTube, found out, you know, the movement of what a what a audition is, how you're supposed to act when you come in, and so he educated himself on. But he had the script within the next day, right? So we go there, and I forgot the the name of the director, but I knew her from other auditions, 
but she didn't know Sefa, you know, solo because this was his first time. So I got in there and I did it, you know, boom, boom. I, dude, I thought I aced it. I said, for sure, I got this. Only because <laughs> in the script, they said they wanted somebody with tattoos and blah, blah, blah. I didn't have it. I didn't even have this yet, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I said, man. So I did it. I aced the lines, blah, blah, blah. Boom. I come out and they called, they called Solo in. So before he goes in, I said, you ready? He said, yeah, I'm ready. But he had like a like a shirt on. So it was covering his tattoo. Then he had a wife beater up underneath. Mm -hmm. Right? So he walks in there. And uh, I said, what did you do? He said, Dad, I walked in there and they asked me, do I have my lines? They, you know, he, of course, he said yes. And he looked at the paper and he dropped the paper on the floor. I said, well, that was kind of cocky. <laughs> Then after that, he said, took off his uh, shirt and the shirt, and it showed the white beaters with all the tattoo, let his hair down long. And then he just went into just straight adapt. Yeah. You know, if he was that guy in the movie. And so, you know, came back, and then uh, um, I said, How'd you do? You know, because it was quiet in there after. He said, I thought I did good. So when he came out, they called me back in there. Uh huh. So I went in there, and then of course you know they, they hey, we're big you know good to see you again. I always been big fans and blah blah blah. Uh, I was waiting for okay what's, but uh, we decided to go with your son. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, so. I came out and I. I, 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 I <laughs> So he went on there, boom, they told him the good news. And then he came back and as we were leaving, I said, that was a good one. He said, you know what, Dad, whether I won or you won, we both won. Yes, sir, absolutely. It says fought two. On the trailer, yeah. it says fought two. In the credits, it says fought two. And yeah. uh, for, the, for the people out there, uh, the roles for a Samoan uh, guns dealer, I'm fucking Mexican and white, and but that just goes to show you Hollywood. But uh, I'll never yeah. forget that. I'll never forget when I saw your son at the trailer with his name up on the door. And I was like, well, I guess I didn't get the role, but I didn't know yeah. that you were up. For, I didn't know you were up for that too. So that, that's just okay. awesome. That's, that's awesome. Um, um, KC Maynard is asking, who do you think Zilla and Jacob Fatu is going to side with once they get into the WWE? Well, that'd be up to WWE, you know, um, <laughs> If it was me, I'd probably separate both of them because, you know, to separate these two and have that dream match to be able to happen on the grandest stage, it'd be nice to be able to see Jacob go against Zilla. You know, again, and these are, you know, these kids already has built their fan base and not even on a, you know, big lens of WWE yet. So, you know, not only they're coming in uh, with the, with the fans behind them, but they're also coming in to step into. I would think would make sense to be a part of the bloodline. But again, I, I'm not I'm not the writer for WWE. I'm, uh, you know, we can just you know uh, voice our opinions about it. But you know, if it ain't broke, right? Well, you ain't got to fix it. Yes, sir. Uh, that's right. We're going to come in with a few more questions. Uh, this is coming in from Audio Attack 01. Uh, who do you think Roman would end up tagging with when he comes back? Would it be Jimmy or The Rock? Or do you believe Solo will relinquish his position to Roman Reigns? I almost kind of see Roman coming in and Solo stand his ground. Uh, because... Uh, I just feel that could be something, you know, with the outstanding performance of Solo holding it down since, you know, Roman's been, been out the picture. You know, he's been doing a, a, a very good job as, you know, building his brand and, and uh, you know, holding that, that part of the bloodline. Well, I guess they call it bloodline 2.0. 2.0, yeah. Whatever, yeah. 
And so I think for, you know, I'm always thinking, Joey, I'm always thinking, what would the fans like to see? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because if the fans want to see it, well, definitely that that's what makes money, you know? And so, you know, we all know that Solo was, you know, the kind of the enforcer for Roman for years. And well, how good would that be just to see that? If, even if it's just for one for one match, yes, you know, would it be like on a good big summer slam or a big big event, you know. Uh, yes, but sir. yeah, I I kind of see Roman on one side, maybe The Rock on the other side. He'll come in, maybe you know, be with with uh, you know Solo on that side, and you can always go. Rock finally gets you know with Roman and. Roman Roman has to be the centerpiece yes, of sir. all the work. You know what I mean? So I don't know. You got the wise man there and I kind of see myself someplace. I don't know where. You know, depends how somewhere, how... somewhere, damn it. I mean, somewhere uh, fucking OG yeah. of the bloodline right here. Come on now. Just you know, we, we really don't know until you kind of see everything unfold. You know what I mean, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully they're able to do some again in WrestleMania. I, I think tribal versus tribal, Las Vegas. I, yeah, maybe tribal versus tribal. I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe two cages, a war war games type of vibe. Never been done before at WrestleMania. You know, you, you have enough of the bloodlines to where they can finally. You know, yeah, you know, I'm I'm thinking for the fans, something that sure. they'll all remember, and and definitely you will draw money, most definitely, you know, because there's never uh, been a right, right, game right. Mania, so. uh, we'll Speaking see. of the, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, speaking of the fans, uh, Tim O'Connor, uh, he's saying uh, my rewatch WWE clip is definitely 2000 Royal Rumble where you dance with Grandmaster Sexay. And Scotty Too Hotty. And, of course, he's <laughs> shouting out the, the RIP to Grandmaster Sexy. And I, I just want to say right now, um, off the top uh, podcast listeners, uh, in the future, we're going to dedicate an entire episode to Too Cool because uh, we want to talk about how Keisha got into that faction. We want to talk about Grandmaster Sexy. And we want to talk about Scotty Too Hotty. So, people, please keep watching and tuning in because we are going to get to Too Cool and, and the, the birth, rebirth, and beyond with with too cool. Uh, we got people watching from the Philippines. Uh, Big Keish, when was the last time you were in the Philippines? Oh man, it's probably been over twenty years. Uh, okay. We flew into Manila. I uh, got my fix on adobo chicken and rice. Went out, <laughs> of course, went out and did the show that night. Came back. We was on a chartered flight going from there to Guam. So. It was wow. a real quick uh, experience in the Philippines, and the people were just, man, it was lit. You know, we, we was just all wilding out out there. And the fans out there in the Philippines, boy, when they come, they come strong, right? So man. big shout out to the Philippines. Uh, hopefully one day I'm able to come out there and, uh, you know, be at a signing or a show, whatever the case may be. You know, I look forward to meeting all the fans out there. I just, I just want to say, Mahakita, Magandang Umanga Po. Oh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> That's my little Tagalog right there, Big Keish. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't know. You didn't know Tim didn't know his little Tagalog. It's because I like them Panay women. Uh, oh, no. or, or I used to, at least. Um, I just man, know we, the bad words on there. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, same same here, same here. But we'll, we'll stay away from that right now. Big Keish, I just want to yeah. let you know. I wanna, uh, I'm want i going to take one more question here, and I want to talk to you about AEW. Um, okay, uh, here's the last question. This is a good one. Big Keish, this is from Dave Izzo. Did you ever try to perform the worm? <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a good that's a good question, but hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did do you know how much junk in the trunk I got behind me, man? <laughs> Try to be able to do that, like, oh hell no, man. Oh my goodness, man. I'm oh probably, my goodness. I'll be back. Hey, I probably could have if I tried to, but nah, okay. man. My, my, you know, my junk in the truck won't. It just weighs me down. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's why I leave it to Scotty. Scotty can handle that. 
That's right. So that, that that's a big no. That's a big no on the W O R M. So big quiche about two weekends ago, uh, AEW yeah. came to Las Vegas, double or nothing pay-per-view. So um, Edge had a match against Malachi Black. And uh, man, um, I was there in person. I took a little field trip. And yeah. uh, your brother from another mother, we're talking about Kavika. Uh, he made his uh, return to pay-per-view. And uh, he came not only uh, the show, he came from underneath the ring. And he was able to come out and help out Edge against the House of Black. And Edge would prevail and win. And there was Gangrel on pay-per-view in front of thousands of people, in front of the whole world, holding it down with Edge. The first time the Brood made a reunion on uh, television in over 20, 30 years. Yeah. Um, did, you see any, did you see any of that? I absolutely did. How, how can I miss that? A sucker went viral all over the place. It was so good to see him. You know, Kavika Gangrel. You know, the world knows him as Gangrel, the vampire warrior, the leader of the brute, I like to say. The sure. leader of the And it's, it was good to see, you know, David out there on national TV. You know, uh, he's one of the hardest working cats uh, that I know in the industry and still going on, you know, every week. This guy is out and, and doing the shows, but. It's, you know, that's where I got this song from, Late Night, Early Flights. It was from David, just seeing his post, hashtag Late Night, Early Flights. And, uh, you know, to see David on TV, was, it was real good. You know, I, I I love the fact that, you know, how they featured him coming out and, you know, Man. Get, get a couple of his finishes in. And I, I was going to hit the screen if I seen that somebody was going to stand up and not, not sell David's finish, but... When David put them down and then, you know, they all went home, one, two, three. It was nice to see, you know, them two hug and, uh, you know, Ed showed the respect to Kavika David and, you know, raised his hand in the squared circle. So, you know, hey, I'm assuming and I'm sure just by hearing the crowd reaction to uh, uh, Gang Grill, I'm assuming that possibly, you know, AEW, they want to do some good business. Uh, to be able to bring back, you know, the brood. Uh, the, uh, yes, he's a veteran. He knows it. He knows this stuff in the, you know, in his sleep. And let's just hope, you know, uh, let's just hope that this won't be the last time we see Gang Grill on national TV. You know? Yes, sir. Now take us back uh, to Too Cool versus uh, the Brood, because I know yeah. you guys had some some matches out there. Do uh, do you recall? Any of those matches? Do any of those matches stand out between Too Cool and The Brood? Oh, most definitely. Like a lot of times, they had that show Sunday Night Heat uh, before Monday Night Raw, and they would pre-tape uh, these shows here and then go into the live show of Monday Night Raw. So we would probably be the ones to uh, you know work together, and uh, sometimes they would put us to close the show, and sometimes would have they would put us to open up the show uh, wow. to be able to people for ratings and uh, a viewership, you know, so they would, our chemistry amongst Brood and with Tuku and Rikishi was just a match made in heaven, man. It was just poetry in motion. You know, you got like the crews, the vampires, like the Lost Boys, and then you got the hip hop with the, you know, with the big cat, you know what I mean? And it uh, it was so easy to work against those guys, you know, and uh, uh, the spots of the chemistry, you know, it was just, it was meant to, meant to be booked together. And, uh, you know, David, to me, I've always felt David as a, as a main event player, you know, yes, because he was like, you know, he was like the leader of the crew coming out in the middle, the cool fire coming through. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, when he starts to break out on his own, you know, uh, it just didn't. I felt the company didn't book him the right way, you know, because he could have been that guy just to, you know, have those type of matches on TV where, TV where he's just squashing people. David's entrance could have been an entrance similar to something in the mixture of Undertaker and Bray Wyatt, I kind of see. Yeah, absolutely. You yes. know what I mean? I'm yes, thinking sir. And so, but that was a type of character, like Gang Grill. Like that character, 
there's so many ways that they could have went with him on that character. And, you know, it just, uh, you know, after the brood and then, you know, when David took off by himself, I had no idea. I, I didn't see him too much. And then just, you know, start to see him on, uh, you know, a few independent shows and signings. And, you know, he still looks great. Man, I think he looks even better today. Yes, sir. You know? yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. But, yeah, so, you know, David, if you're listening, I know I love you, man. And, again, man, you, you're one of the hardest workers uh, in this industry nonstop. So take care of yourself and try to get some rest, my friend. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know I love you, too. Yeah. And there it is. You know what? And I got to say, uh, one of my best pictures that I took absolutely uh, is of you and David together. We were at a barbecue in uh, – it was at a fan's house. His name was Mean Dean. Uh, yep. he, he, Ely, I don't know if Ely has that picture right up, but uh, there it is right there. Boom. Look at that. I uh, took that picture. That picture right there is probably my favorite picture of you guys uh, together. Uh, it was it was a great day. I'll never forget it, man. But that right there, both my trainers minus uh, Black Pearl, Reno, you know, I don't know why. Uh, that's one of my favorite pictures right there because, I, just, I, you know, I love you guys. And uh, I, the, the the Love stuff, I, yes, sir. The the stuff I've learned outside of the ring has really made my life better. So that's when, I, in my opinion, that's how you gauge a great professional. Not just a wrestling school, but your trainers. If they can teach you to handle uh, life outside the ring as well as inside the ring, man, then you got yourself some solid cats. And I'm looking at two of the most solid cats in the game right there: David Heath and Solafa Solofa Fatu Jr. Right there. <laughs> Yes, sir. Big key. Yes, Come sir. On, I know you're busy. Uh, we will uh, tap in again next week uh, once we return back to the studios. Fans, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep taking your questions. Uh, man, uh, we appreciate you guys all tapping in weekly to the Off the uh, Top podcast. Uh, Big Keish, as always, do you have any final words? You always remember this. It's free to be kind and always, always smarten up. And I'm out.